Welcome to Aloft's um, launch of the monthly webinar series, Before You Fly, Check the Map. Um, this is episode one, UAS operations near small airports in class G uncontrolled airspace. Um, the, first of all, since this is our first episode, um, this series will be focusing on connecting with the UAS community um, to illuminate uh, drone airspace challenge areas, situational awareness topics, and just pilot questions in general um, that we have received from the UAS community. Here at Aloft, um, it's really important to us that we provide educational materials that help make the national airspace safer and compliant for your UAS operations. So, today's agenda um, I will introduce myself, the host, Erica Cooley, for this webinar and um, a lot, the company that I represent, um, if you're not familiar um, with us. And then we'll move on to the meat of the webinar. Um, can I fly my drone near small airports in Class G uncontrolled airspace? Um, and then we'll move on to identifying different types of airspace in the national airspace. And this will be more of a high level overview um, as we really wanna use this series to connect monthly to the UAS community, to go more in depth in all different types of airspace um, layers that you may see on the Before You Fly app while you're trying to use situational awareness tools um, to plan your safe and compliant UAS operations. <clears throat> and then um, I will go into defining what is LANS and notify and fly and what's the difference between the two. Um, this will be a good precursor for our um, demonstration on the Before You Fly app to really see what uncontrolled and controlled airspace look like and how they differ on the map. Um, and then we will close it out with a live demo um, on before the Before You Fly platform, uh, looking at some air, small airports in Class G uncontrolled airspace. Um, and then we'll close it out with a live Q&A for all the great questions you guys have shared. So the, um, to introduce Aloft, uh, Aloft is formerly known as Kitty Hawk. That might be the name that you guys are more familiar with. Um, Aloft is the market leader in drone airspace systems and UTM technologies. Our solutions make it easy and safe to, comply, to fly um, compliantly at scale. We have a few different apps. We are the sole provider of the FAA's Before You Fly app, which is the leading UAS situational awareness tool. Um, but we also have the Aloft app, um, which is a free app that users um, can use to log flights, track assets, um, and then apply for lands as we are um, a UAS service supplier, um, FAA approved UAS service supplier. And we also have our enterprise product, which is Aloft Air Control, which is a really nice single record, um, single data record for enterprise platforms to use uh, for scaling UAS programs. So anywhere from a few pilots to hundreds flying all over the country, having all of your assets, um, pilot information, flight plans, all in one single um, record of data. And then myself, my name is Erica Cooley. I am an FAA certified part 107 remote pilot uh, since 2017. I've experienced flying um, automated flight planning, aerial photogrammetry, um, everything from construction to aerial cinematography. Um, I am the content marketing manager for Aloft, and so I'm responsible uh, for keeping the drone community current on how to leverage uh, UAS technologies to fly safely and compliantly in the airspace. Um, you may have read some of my blogs. I also have 
some video tutorials, one on this subject that we're speaking about today, um, small airports and uncontrolled airspace. Um, I also am a proud member of the Women in Drones and uh, Women Who Drone uh, communities, and I am an FAA safety team representative in the Seattle area. And there's a link here in this deck will be shared after the presentation um, where you can access any of these links and this information. I mean, this link here is all the blogs that I have written on Aloft's website. So diving in to the meat of this webinar. So the question, can I fly my drone near small airports in class G uncontrolled airspace? It's a great question. We get it a lot, especially since launching the data submission um, feature in the Before You Fly app in 2020, we received a lot of questions and flaggings of small airports that were in Class G uncontrolled airspace. People are just confused, like, can I fly here? This is a small airport, um, but it doesn't indicate that it's in controlled airspace. So I put a little quote here um, that is the official statement from the FAA's website on operations near airports in uncontrolled airspace. So I'll just read it here. Uh, For flights near airports in uncontrolled airspace that remain under 400 feet um, above the ground level, AGL, um, prior authorization is not required. So that is the foundation to the answer to that question. Um, but let's dive in a little bit deeper. So how do I know if I am in class G uncontrolled airspace? So when you're viewing your intended operational area on the before you fly or loft map, any airspace that does not have a color such as red, blue, purple, green, yellow, etc., indicates that you are in uncontrolled airspace. And um, I just pulled a screenshot here to show you guys an example of that. We'll dive more into that when we are looking at um, the actual live before you fly um, application so that we can look at uh, all of these different airspaces and how they actually interact. But as you can see here, I have a circle surrounding um, two different public use aerodromes in uh, the Sonoma, California area. And you'll see that there is no color other than this red circle, which I placed just for reference. Um, there's no color surrounding these two public use aerodromes. So what this indicates is this is class G uncontrolled airspace. And so is all of this surrounding, but what is not, you'll see are these blue circles and this yellow circle, and we'll dive more in in the live demo. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a visual that anywhere that is not, has does not have a colored shape surrounding it is class G uncontrolled airspace on the before you fly out. So now we'll just give a really high level overview. Um, as I stated before, this is a ongoing series that we're really excited to launch. And this um, will we'll really dive into each of these airspaces each month. Um, and also would love to open it up if at the end there'll be an email um, address that you can send any ideas that you have um, for different webinar topics that you would like to talk about. So, um, this is a graphic from the FAA's website that shows all the different ceiling heights and information of the different types of airspace. So only airports that are located in class A, B, C, D, and E2 controlled airspace require a lance authorization to operate near or around. Many smaller uh, municipal, regional, executive, aerodromes around the country are actually located in class G, uncon uncontrolled airspace, meaning you do not need a lance authorization to operate near or around them. Um, some of these airports are located under class E controlled airspace, but unless it's class E2, they will not require prior authorization in order to operate near them, um, since the controlled airspace for most of class E E airspace, excluding E2, um, starts at 700 feet AGL, which is above um, the ceiling, the max ceiling height for UAS operations um, through standard lance authorizations. Um, there are multiple types of class E airspace, as I just mentioned. Um, class E2 requires a lance authorization in order to operate um, because it is from the surface and would go up through the 400 foot 
stealing. Um, so that we will dive into more in another webinar. Really look forward to talking more on that topic. And um, I also at the end have a link to a uh, blog that I wrote that really gives more information um, on the different types of airspace layers. Now, I wanted to give a chance to talk about what is LANS, what is Notify and Fly, and what's the difference between LANS and Notify and Fly. Um, so LANS is, stands for the Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capabilities. Um, this is a collaboration between the FAA and private industry partners. Um, and so what it allows operators to do is in near real time have access to around, I think it's around 731 airports um, that are in controlled airspace to fly um, in different areas of that controlled airspace all around the country, um, which is really awesome. Before it was a very long laborious um, process to access that controlled airspace um, for UAS flights. Um, so since launching Lance um, has been a really exciting um, way of opening up different flight capabilities in controlled airspace. Um, and then what is Notify and Fly? So Notify and Fly is a, a feature that um, we launched on the Before You Fly app uh, back in August of 2021. And what it is, is it's a simple way to let other pilots um, in the area know that you are flying in uncontrolled airspace. So um, this idea, kind of to roll it back a little bit, the idea for Notify and Fly came to our team in uh, really analyzing some of the data that came from the data submission form um, and realizing a lot of users were notifying that they were going to operate their drone even when they were in uncontrolled airspace. So it's interesting, it kind of gave us an aha light bulb moment of this is, people are complying with what will one day be remote ID, um, even though they don't have to yet. They want to bring better situational awareness to others in the airspace and let them know that they are operating um, in this airspace and to you know, be mindful that there might be a drone there. Um, and then to layer on that, we also, um, in terms of uh, commercial pilots and hobbyists also thought that it would be great for first responders and government agencies to be able to notify of really important life-saving operations that might be being done in um, uncontrolled airspace so that, you know, the recreational pilot, the commercial pilot could give right away for um, that important work to be done. Uh, so as I stated, the difference between the two is just a really easy differentiator, and I'll give an example when we're looking um, at the map, is that LANS is specifically for gaining access and authorization to controlled airspace, um, whereas Notify and Fly is a notification that is currently not required, LANS is required, um, and Notify and Fly is for uncontrolled airspace. So it's really adding an extra layer of um, situational awareness for users. And um, we recently received a really great testimonial from a Notify and Fly user that I uh, wanted to share here. Um, and I'll just read it. It says, I use the program as having another tool in my toolbox because I think it supplements the see and avoid concept, all in the interest of safety. I use it as part of my pre-flight checklist so I can see who is flying where and I can plan my flight accordingly. I've shared with other drone pilots that using Notify and Fly helps increase your safety margin and it's easy and effortless and makes us all better airmen. So that testimony really speaks for itself of exactly how we hope people will use Notify and Fly in the future and, you know, starting to layer them as part of your, as was mentioned here, as part of your pre-flight checklist. So you, if you were in controlled airspace, you would apply for Lance, um, but you also could submit a Notify and Fly um, to the map so that there's just an extra layer of awareness there for other pilots. So now I will jump on and give a live demo on the Before You Fly platform of um, how to submit a um, Notify and Fly, a Lance authorization, but also we'll take a look at some of the or airports in uncontrolled Class G airspace.
Bear with me for one sec while I get this going. And also, if anybody would like to start submitting their questions in the Q&A, thank you to everyone who ahead of time submitted questions. Um, we will, following the live demo, we will um, be taking some of those questions. And yeah, so one second. Dive in. All right. All right. So, all right. So, here is the desktop um before you fly platform and currently let's take a look at sonoma park so this is a public use um aerodrome it is and as you can see i dropped down here on the right hand side I and mean, if we zoom in a little bit you'll see you can see kind of an outline of the runway here but to indicate that it is in uncontrolled airspace, there is no colored circle or um, polygon surrounding this airport. So you do know that this is a, um, airport, a small airport that is located in uncontrolled airspace. Um, you can also look over here on the um, bar that's over here on the side, the notification bar, and that will give you this type information, which it says uncontrolled airport. Um, and then in juxtaposition, just to show the difference, oops, we'll leave our pin over here, to show the difference is, if we zoom out a little bit, here is another airplane icon, which is how um, airports or um, helipads are indicated on the map you can see up here there's a helicopter icon um, but there is a airplane icon over here to the right <clears throat> we click on that you can see that this is class d controlled airspace um, surrounding kapc and what that indicates is that this whole circle any operations that um, would you would like to take in this area would need to be um, would need a lance authorization to uh, operate there and you can see this here's this get lance button you can click through um, to get that but then also if we click back over here <clears throat> you'll see that instead of showing the get lance option there's a notify and fly option instead so let's just for interest um submit a notify and fly let's say we were intending to fly um in this airspace surrounding the Noma sky park so we would click notify and fly <clears throat> and then a circle would automatically pop up uh surrounding our airspace our airspace that we would be flying in our operational area and here gives a little information just defining what notify and fly is um, and also insinuating and noting that this is not a a replacement for lands or an airspace authorization um, that you may have to get also through the FAA drone zone so if we click next down here then we have a few options that come up. Um, so the options that there currently are for the type of flight are recreational, commercial, government, and first responder. So the first two are probably pretty self-explanatory, but as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, government and first responder are really ones we're excited to see the adoption and use of, um, in addition to recreational and commercial commercial they really add another layer of um, airspace awareness for other operators um, to know you know there's really important life-saving work that's being done in this area with drones i should keep an eye out for it um, so for the purpose of today we'll do a commercial 
And so now you can see that that's selected. All of the other options currently um, are static. They will be your start time of right now. Um, and then the ceiling height would be up to 400 feet. And then the duration is 60 minutes. So if you would like to, um, if you're going to be operating for longer than 60 minutes, um, you may want to just submit a second one after that 60 minute period um, ends. Um, but in the future, there will be lots of great new feature um, additions to Notify and Fly. So keep an eye out for that. There will be some exciting stuff to come in 2022. But know that I'm not a robot. And then you'll click down here and go File Flight. And now you can see that there's a blue circle surrounding this airspace that's near um, Sonoma Sky Park. Um, and if we come over here on the navigation bar, um, there will be uh, the type of flight. So we selected commercial and also our ID. So this is something really important to point out that I um, didn't mention before that the best, one of the best things about Notify and Fly is that it is it's purely anonymous. So it is, you're not having to sacrifice any of your um, private information and your own security um, to let people know that you're operating in the area. Um, so it gives that random ID number um, to the operation, gives your start time, the date, the duration, and then the ceiling up 400 feet. Um, so, and then we can see it's live on the map. And then if any of you guys are following along, you're welcome to open up the Before You Fly um, application on your desktop or on your mobile device. And if you go to uh, the Sonoma Sky Park area, uh, you will actually see that circle that we just submitted. So this is in real time. This is live on the, or the Before You Fly application now. Um, and then just as an example, we won't go through the whole Lance submission process, but if you click uh, this Get Lance button here or on um, the mobile app, it will pull up um, the Aloft app. It'll automatically, if you have an, um, an account, it'll let you log in and you can start that process of um, applying for a Lance authorization, which to, um, to reiterate, is required for all um, operations in controlled airspace. So oh, let's maybe look at one more airspace, um, uh, one more uh, airport in uncontrolled airspace out this airport. So if we go to the Linden, New Jersey area, um, you will see that there is a small uncontrolled airport, Linden Airport, um, located here in Linden, New Jersey. Um, but what's interesting is there is no colored, you know, circle or polygon surrounding that airport, indicating that it is in Class G uncontrolled airspace. But if we click up here, we'll see that this is controlled airspace. This is um, class B controlled airspace surrounding KEWR um, in New York. So it's a good way of just visually seeing the difference of this. And this is how, when you're doing your um, flight planning for your operations, um, really looking ahead of time and checking out, seeing if there are um, small airports and uncontrolled airspace um, in that, um, in the presentation that I will send the deck following the event there is a link to the blog that i mentioned um, that really goes into some tips um, checking out the takeoff and landing pattern for airports and uncontrolled airspace it's a really just good information for you i'm um, making sure you understand right of way um, and yeah just really making sure you're familiar with your airspace but also knowing yes you are allowed to fly without prior authorization um, around small airports in uncontrolled airspace. Obviously use your best judgment, probably taking off your drone from the tarmac of that uncontrolled airspace would, would not be safe. Um, so, you know, being mindful of your takeoff and landing positions and other air traffic that might be um, happening in the airspace. So with that, I will Stop sharing my screen and I will start our Q&A portion. Um, let's open up some of the questions. Okay, so I received a question from Lorenzo uh, Rata, hopefully I said your name right, 
Um, do either of your apps show low level military flight routes on the map? So that is, yes, that's a great question. Um, that is one of the topics that we're really looking forward to diving in more deeply is like prohibited and restricted areas, um, TFRs, military um, military flight routes. Um, but yes, when you are looking on the map, you can see um, military facilities. And um, most of the time those will be indicated in red um, as they are likely restricted or prohibited airspace. Um, so thank you for your question. Uh, okay, we received a question about Class E airspace. Can you address flying under that Class E airspace for 400 um, feet and below? Yeah, so this is another one that really looking forward to diving into deeper. But um, as was mentioned, that Class E2 is the only airspace, um, controlled airspace that um, you would need to basically apply for, or you would need to be mindful of because that starts at the surface and would go up through that 400 um, feet. So you just have to be careful when you're in that type of class E airspace. Um, all the other types of class E airspace, um, yeah, start like at 700 feet or above. Um, so it wouldn't impact drone operations since the ceiling would be 400 feet unless you um, use the FAA's drone zone to um, receive authorization to fly above that 400 feet. And usually um, in your um, the COA that you receive, you'll have more information about what you'll need to do there. Um, let me... <laughs> Thank you, Fred Valerie. Um, the Aloft shirt that we're wearing, yes, they're very, very fun. Um, and feel free to shoot me an email. I'll uh, send through the deck and maybe we can get you hooked up with some Aloft swag. Um, so the uh, good question from Don Brown. Um, the Notify and Fly feature is in the mobile app. Um, if you haven't, if you don't have auto updates on your before you fly app, you might just need to make sure it updated. Um, that new feature came out in um, August. So um, maybe your um, app has updated, but if you're not seeing that, um, it will um, usually come in with the new update. And then also in the mobile app, what's interesting is you can look in the right hand corner and if you're in uncontrolled airspace, so there is um, no colored circle or polygon surrounding the airspace that your pin is dropped in, there will be a, a blue circle that um, shows a square with a, um, an arrow inside of it and that is actually the notify and fly icon so and when you're in in con and when you're in controlled airspace that icon really nifty big shout out to the uh, um, aloft development team um that changes to get lance so the interface changes as you move through the airspace um so i'd recommend if you haven't had a chance um john but also everyone um to really play in there in the before you fly app and kind of see those differences in how the interface changes as you move through the airspace i think we'll have time for maybe one or two more questions really appreciate everyone's engagement um Ooh, interesting. A, a question from Greg Lang um, here in the Washington area. I am familiar with um, the joint base Lewis McCord. Um, it'd be helpful for us to have more lands participation in, in the Puget Sound area. Absolutely. I am I'm in full um, full agreeance with you, Greg. I have many um, airspace um, authorizations that I have submitted through the FAA's drone zone. Um, more airports are coming on every day. Currently, it is 731. But um, Interestingly, like I used to have one um, in the Renton area uh, for that airspace, and now that has come on to Lance. So it's good just to keep an eye on um, the map. But yes, I'm hoping in agreeance that one day uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord will be online as well for Lance. Yes, is there a um, follow up from Don? Is there a symbol for the drone? Um, at the notify and fly location. So currently that is just that circle that will surround um, the airspace. So that blue circle that we saw on the map, 
Um, and all of this is being recorded. So at the end or at following the event, I will be sending um, both the deck as well as this recording to you. So you can really look in there and see how that looks. Um, there isn't per se a drone icon that shows up. It's just that blue circle that would indicate that you are, um, that you did submit a notify and fly. Okay, final question I'll answer is from Stuart um, Ramson. Great question. Please describe the main difference between the Aloft mobile app and the Before You Fly app. So it's a great question. We get this a lot. Um, the interface, the map is the same um, in terms of what you'll see. Um, the notify and fly feature is available on both. Um, but the good thing to remember is the Aloft mobile app is for applying for land. So, um, I mean, in also, you know, situational awareness and flight planning and all um, asset management and all that great um, stuff too. But on the Before You Fly app, you cannot apply for Lance. When you click that Lance button, it will take you to our Aloft mobile app, um, which is as a UAS, or a UAS service supplier uh, for the FAA, we process that. And I did want to mention, um, we are proudly the leading USS in the United States processing um, a little over 70% of all the monthly lands authorizations in the US. So we're very grateful for all of our loyal users who um, use our app a lot, but also use the Before You Fly app. So with that, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Um, just a big thank you for everyone who joined. Um, I'm going to pop my email in the chat. Also be looking for an email in your inbox um, with a copy of the slide deck from today's presentation, as well as um, a recording of this um, webinar. And we'll be putting a little survey in there to just uh, pull some ideas that you guys have, different airspace that you'd love to talk about more in depth um, and keep an eye out for um, more of the Before You Fly Check the Map webinar series. So with that, I want to say thank you and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for joining me. See you again soon.